was ready to see some fairly odd parents. <laughs> Say we also have an additional guest, Mr. Danny Phantom himself. Woo! But I gotta say one thing: there, none of this would be po possible without the creator himself, Mr. Butch Hartman. Woo! Hi, everybody. Hi. Well, my microphone is I'm, I'm tied to the table. I'm, I'm glad we went. I'm glad we went all out for the wireless mics. This is great, guys. Thank you. The wire. This is really great. No, we spare no expense here too. Hi, you guys having a good time? Woo! That wasn't very loud. You having a good time? Woo! Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm so grateful to be here. It's so great to be in Burbank. Is it a thousand degrees outside right now? Sure. Awesome. Nothing like wearing a superhero costume in 100 degree weather. I always say, super fun. Well, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm the boring one up here today because we have some funny voices. You guys like voice actors? Yeah! Good, good. I wish I did, but we're going to bring some out anyway. Um, and I've got, I work with some of the best voice actors in the business. I mean, they couldn't come today, so I'm going to bring some voice actors out that may or may not have done some stuff. I'm kidding. Um, so we're going to bring out my first voice actor. Okay, you've seen the Fairly Odd Parents, right? Um, and okay, well, this guy worked on Danny Phantom, okay? So this is the voice of Danny Phantom, David Kaufman. David Kaufman. David Coffin. How you doing, David? Just so you know, the mics are tied to the table. The mics are tied. We can't escape with the mics. Now, David, you're the first one out. You get to pick your favorite seat. I will be on the end. On the end right there? Okay. Yeah, those other people can come out. Have you guys um, heard David's voice on Danny Phantom? Yes! Yeah. All right. David is amazing. David, we met a long time ago. We'll get to that. We met like over 20 years ago. David's been amazing, and he just started doing Comic-Cons now. So you guys want to give him another round of applause so we can feel, like, feel welcome? He wants to do some more? Awesome, awesome. I want to introduce some more uh, voice actors. Is that okay with you? All right. Coming to the stage, she did the voice of Wanda on The Family Oddbears. Fresh out of rehab, here she is, Suzanne Blakesley. It didn't take that. That's all right. Come on up, darling. We have your special beverage right down there at the end. Where'd she go? Oh, there she goes. There she is right there. She's done other voices and other shows, but I don't care about those. It's just one is the only one I wanted. And, it, and the voice of Timmy's mom as well. That's right. Exactly. All right. Coming to the stage next. Who else is out there in the hallway? Oh, you're going to love this one. <laughs> you're going to love this one. He thinks he's talented. He thinks he's popular. So make him think that he is. The voice of Mr. Crocker, Mr. Carlos Ellis Rocky. Come into the stage. It's good to see you, brother. Carlos has done so much work. I mean, what haven't you done, Carlos? Uh, not enough tough puppy. That's right. That's true. Not enough tough puppy. Exactly. Well, have a seat. Have a seat. All the mics need to work. And uh, I got to wait. One more person coming out. I'm gonna let Darren. I saved this person for last because he uh, is the most handsome and best looking one out of the bunch that's why this man does the voice of timmy's dad jorgen von strangle Ooh, and cosmo give it up for darren norris, darren norris. or as i call him derwin nordstein there he is right there he is right there a pleasure my friend good to see you good to see you all right so you're there. I'm going to go. Does all the mics work? Test your mics. Uh, Hello. No? Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah, good, good. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. Well, we have a lot of talkative people up here, and they want to talk to you. So I'd love to hear some questions. But we're going to, while you're thinking of your questions, okay, I'm going to ask a couple of questions first. So, um, are you guys glad to see each other for the for the, this? No, one? not at all. I didn't, think so. I didn't think so. Hey, so um, so Darren, uh, who do you do on the Fairly Odd Parents? What voices? Can you do the voices? Do three voices real quick. And then I have to guess. Yes. No. Just who, give, give, give me some ear. They're here to hear your voices. Oh, let me think. How old are you? That's right. <laughs> By the way, when someone does a voice, it's always a pledge to applaud insanely when they no. do a voice. Okay? <laughs> We want applause. So you did uh, Timmy's dad. Who's Timmy's dad's arch enemy? Oh, well, that would be my my next my next door neighbor, Dinkleberg. Uh, right. Hey, neighbor. 
also then uh, you did Timmy's dad, and then you also did the, the world's toughest fairy. What is his name? His name is Jorgen von Strangel, and you know it. Why are you asking these questions? You I know the answer to. And then also you did the voice of uh, there's a fairy with green hair. I forget his name. It's not true. What are you saying? He's not true. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Green la la la. <laughs> Very good. No, keep it going. We gotta fill an hour here, so keep it going. Keep it going. Hey, the guy next to you over there, he claims to have worked on the show. I'm not really sure, but I know you did some voice on Fairly Odd Parents too, right, Carlos? Yes, I did. I really did. It's true. Denzel, why don't you tell them what you do? Leave me alone, mother. Why do I have to sit next to fairies? <laughs> yes, the voice actor feeds on applause. We feed on it. We feed on it. What was Carter's cat's name again? Oh, girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend. Okay. And, uh, and now this, this young lady down here. I know you're in your, you're in your mid twenties. Yes. Yes, mid twenties. Yes. Congrats on uh, having your first beer. That's great. Congrats yes, I, I I started the show when I was ten years old. I thought so. Yes. <laughs> Suzanne Blakesley. She does so many voices just in in the industry. But you're you're famous on Fairly Odd Parents for two. Timmy's mom. Oh. I'm not very bright, but I guess that's my name. That's right. <laughs> my name is Barnaby. <laughs> and also, you know, there's a fairy with pink hair. I forget her name. What do you... Uh... Oh, yes! Wanda! <laughs> <laughs> I listen to her every night before I go to sleep. I think we broke some glasses back there with this one. How could you not fall in love with that woman? <laughs> In one decimal magnifico, what's his description of himself? What does he say about himself? I'm handsome, I am handsome, and I'm also five feet handsome. <laughs> <laughs> and this young man over here, who uh, I'm saving him for last because he's the most talented of everybody up here. Uh, you did the voice of another one of my shows, a lead character. What voice was that? Um, that might have been your favorite ghost boy, Danny Phantom. Uh -huh. Burger, so you can catch me down there. Um, if I'm not there, then I'm fighting ghosts. How do these uh, how do these people sound like they're in there? Yeah, give them a round of applause. I mean, uh, so uh, a couple of questions I want to ask. We'll get some questions. You guys have some questions out there? We're going to get to your questions yeah. in just a second. Okay. I'm going to ask. I'm going to go down the line and ask uh, specific questions. Carlos, when did you get started doing voices? I got started. Thanks, Carlos. On to Darren. <laughs> That's all right. When did you get started doing voices? Oh, mother, I don't like this person. I got started in 1991. I was a stand-up comic, and I had an audition for something called Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> and uh, they didn't want Australia. They wanted Woody Allen, blah, blah, blah. And I picked up a vacuum manual. I said, when you're plugging in your unit, make sure you're not near water. Otherwise, you could get electrocuted. And they liked it. And I got Rocco. And then that was the birth of everything. So 1991. Yes. Final answer, 1991. <laughs> now, I didn't give you your first job, but I gave you your best job, am I correct? You gave me my best job as Billy Crystal Ball, back when I couldn't do Billy Crystal at all. And if I do all the sound alike stuff on Monsters in Kingdom Hearts 3, why would I? But Billy, I think I was something like that. I'm Billy Crystal Ball! That was the first voice that Butch gave me. And I don't know what the origin is. You said I had a crazy school teacher that I wanted to put in something else. And Butch and I collaborated on what the voice was. Well, when you came up with the voice for Crocker, it's a really cool story. I, I, I brought Carlos in, and I said, this future is insane. And you said, I want to combine Richard Dreyfus. So do Richard Dreyfus. I don't like panties hanging on the rod. Right. Oh, and then, and then, then you combined it with Gene Wilder. Say it again! <laughs> do Willy Wonka. Oh, Willy Wonka. Uh, you are not evil. You are good. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. So when you combine those two, what do you get? And then I ripped off Harry Shearer's Montgomery Birds. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Then I sped it up, and I added to uh, Richard Dreyfus, and then I added Harry! <laughs> that's how you got Mr. Crocker, by stealing from three people. This is that's how it happens. Thief. I'm a thief. That's how it happens. All right, so then, Derek, give it up for Carlos, by the way, everybody. Carlos, I'm a dragon. One man show. Darren. Who was your favorite Fairly Odd Parents character that you ever did? The April Fool. 
<laughs> Thanks, Darren. <laughs> what, uh, uh, I did. Lying. I did the April Fool in a couple episodes. Remember? Absolutely. I know. I know. No. Uh, my favorite, I think, is everybody's favorite. Uh, it's tough to pick a favorite, though, right? Okay, because yeah. Dad is so close to me. All I do is just ratchet myself up a little bit, and then you get to Dad, right? Yep. You just take me. Oh, kick it up a notch, a notch, a notch. There we are. All right, now we're ready to go. Uh, <laughs> The Cosmo, because of the evolution of Cosmo's voice. Yes, now how did Cosmo, Cosmo started out? He started as sort of a used car salesman, okay. slick and cool snake oil guy. We're magic, ooh, magic, ooh. <laughs> and then when they, we got the big pickup for the multiple episodes, they wisely said, okay, you're no good at that, so we're gonna make him a different voice. <laughs> and so he became the high energy, high pitched, uh, foil, really, uh, of the show. So that was driven. Turn think, that off in the meantime. I think it. Al- I think it also. Oh, there you go. I think it also came from uh, the fact we got to do the show for so long. Yes. That's really a benefit of having the show out for a while. You get to experiment with the characters, and so. And I, and Dad changed a lot too. Dad, because Dad was a lot more normal. He was very normal and sort of a Ward Cleaver kind of person. Well, Timmy, I wouldn't do that if I were you, right. because I've got experience and you don't. And <laughs> <laughs> don't you want to leave your message on your machine on your phone? Don't you want to? Do that? <laughs> no, but uh, what's cool though about Darren is, and, and everybody up here, except for Carlos, they can really add some comedy to what they do. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what Darren does. No, Carlos is Carlos would make me cry laughing. We would cry all the time laughing with her. Because I would mess up the words. No, I <laughs> How can he be so bad? <laughs> Carlos would have a page and a half of dialogue all to himself. No, it'd, be, it'd be Crocker, his mom, Crocker, his mom. Crocker, his mom, Crocker, Crocker, Crocker. Through the entire thing. And all of us would just stand and applaud. Because we were just, we were just knocked out. It's amazing to watch no, exactly. it work. It is. Um, but no, Darren um, really added a lot of, of really fun. To, I think Cosmo kind of came out of the fact we started messing with him between takes. That you were doing the used car sales, but then you go like, I can't believe this. I'm like, that's funny. Keep doing that. Keep doing that yeah, yeah. So a lot of things come out of just messing around, which yeah. is good. Suzanne, my love. Speaking of messing around. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Suzanne. So um, your experience of Fairly Unfairly Odd Parents, was Wanda a, a fun character to do? Did you enjoy doing the voice of Wanda? Oh, my God. Yes. Um, and you, you um, pointed it out exactly what the people that I based it on was Joanne Worley <laughs> and Carol Burnett. Right. And you, you put your finger on it. I love that character because she's so um, positive in a negative way. Um, but I mean, <laughs> she, Wanda, yeah, yeah w- Wanda is always sort of, it's a cruel world when she's the voice of reason. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and this guy, you know, playing his yeah. wife, um, uh, is just magnificent. <laughs> you mean you guys aren't married in real life? I know I may be nagging. I know you're naggy too. <laughs> I grab her before she See, when they do that, I've got to pay them scale, which is really, you know, that's the hard part. <laughs> Danny Kaufman, was uh, Danny Phantom the first, like, superhero-y type of character you did? you've done so many voices, so was uh, that the first kind of action star you did? Yes, it was the first super what, time that I got to play a superhero because I, I, I had done a, a cartoon called Freakazoid. Uh, earlier, but I was the nerdy Dexter Douglas who, you know, when I first, actually when I first booked that, this true story, I booked it and I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. I get to play a nerdy kid who turns into this wacky superhero. And then they were like, no, you're not playing the wacky superhero. <laughs> you're just playing the nerdy kid. I was like, okay. Carlos is playing the wacky superhero. <laughs> um, that was Paul Rugg who played. Paul uh, Rugg, oh, like, genius, yes. Um, so, but Danny was the first, um, actual superhero that I got to play because I was always like this second fiddle. I played Jimmy Olsen to Superman. So this time I So this time I got to be the superhero, which was which was great fun. Um, fun fact: I auditioned for it in uh, uh, December of whatever year, like 2001. I think, yeah, I mean, like, like that. yeah, December 2001. And then didn't hear anything, you know, and you, like actors do, you know, you audition and blah, 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 and then you forget about it. And, and the following November, 
like 11 months later, I get a call from my agent, hey, you booked that thing, Danny Phantom, and I'm like, what, what are you talking <laughs> what about? I had no idea what they were talking about, couldn't remember it, and then finally, and went to the, and now I like to think that basically what was going on during that year was Butch was offering it to every single other person <laughs> in Hollywood, and they, none of them were available, so they were kind of like, I guess we gotta use Kaufman. David was exactly so, right. Paul Rudd said no. <laughs> Paul Rudd said no. <laughs> Suzanne said no. Yeah. And yes, and Butch said no. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what David, it's, it's actually very true. It's funny, um, I'm glad you brought that up because sometimes when you're trying to sell a show, they, they'll say yes, but the development process takes forever. Say forever. No one said it. Forever. Okay. Forever. 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 It takes forever. But it really does because a lot of times the, the, the executives will change hands, the show will change hands, and so the executive who said yes to the show leaves, and then another exec comes in and wants nothing to do with it. So fighting for a show and getting it done, we're actually very fortunate to get the show done in the first place. But then once we did, we had a great voice cast come in and do uh, some amazing voices. So uh, do you guys like the voice actors up here so far? They're being funny for us. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this is good. They're liking it so far. Oh my gosh. All right, so um, who's got a question? Uh, then we got a question. Okay, we have a microphone. Uh, I'll use this microphone right here. Yeah, how about that microphone? Yes, this microphone's good. Come on up. Come here. here we go. Okay, I'm going to um, hold the mic, but you ask your question. What's your name, by the way? Lexi. Lexi. Hey, Lexi. Shout out to Lexi, everybody. Hey, Lexi. Okay, Lexi, what is your question? What is your favorite Fairly Odd Parents episode? Okay, we're going to ask that to Darren. It's strange. I, there's no way to pick a favorite, right? There's just, there's, no, can everybody hear me? It's impossible for me to pick one favorite episode, but the one that I, that I have always found to just consistently make me laugh hard is this silent episode. What's it called? Oh, it's called uh, uh, Pipe Down. Pipe Down, yes. Where Jenny wishes there was no noise. Right, and, and there's no, there's no noise in this, and then at the end of the episode, I, Wish for, and Timmy brilliantly comes up with tacos. Yeah. Well, Timmy, no, Timmy signed something. To he you signed and something. Yeah. Taco. I got taco. That's it. Sound <laughs> comes back <laughs> on. <laughs> it just, it's, Only you can figure it out. Only Kyle yes, can figure it out. Right. Right. Uh, it's such a brilliant encapsulation of that character yep. and the show yep. uh, for me. I just think it's—I thought that was brilliant writing and really funny. Yeah, we had a great time with that one. Yeah. A challenge too. Uh, oh yeah. Time. Yeah. Thank you, Lexi. Yeah. My, favorite, Lexi my favorite episodes are the ones where we get to sing. Yeah. All right, that's the easy way to say it. That's the easy way. Because there's nothing I love more than that. You guys, they, you guys do amazing. See, that's a great sign of a great boy. Thanks, Lexi. Give it up for Lexi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sign of a great voice actor. They can do the voice and they can sing in the voice, which is spooky, scary talent. And it's amazing that they can do all that. Uh, I thought I was a pretty decent voice actor until I met these folks and they blew me out of the water. What's your favorite uh, Fairly Odd? Gosh, I'm so old. I just remember when Crocker gets to join a gang of villains, and he's so happy because he's found some friends. So whatever that episode was, that was my favorite because he gets to say, "But I'm the Falcon." <laughs> I'm so happy to be the Falcon. God, I, I can't come home, mother, right, right now, mother, because I'm with my friends. I'm the Falcon. <laughs> so sad. Give it up for the Falcon, right there. And I gotta ask all of you, um, who's the biggest fan of Butch Hartman out of the four of you? I mean, not just really, nobody? Maybe. Pass. Uh, <laughs> Can we rock, go. paper, scissors for that? Uh, exactly. <laughs> who's got another question? Okay, uh, you, my friend, I'll come to you in one second. Okay, come on over this way, sir. Come on up here. All right. I'm gonna hold this. It's a fairly odd parents for the question or another question. Oh, okay. All right. Only one. All right. Well, this is for Darren. Like, it's not fairly odd parents related, but you voiced. You just said it was fairly odd parents related. <laughs> <laughs> you just said that. Then you said it's not really. It's asking you if, if it's okay. If it's absolutely it's fine. Go right ahead. Okay, so this is for this is for you, Darren. So you voiced my favorite Kiss Next Door villain, Count Speculot. Yeah. And wait, wait, Darren did voices for another show. Yeah. Hold on a minute. No one told. Why wasn't I told? <laughs> so. There's like you voice a very questionable villain. So what's the question? <laughs> so, what was the what was your favorite Count Spankulot episode that that was like hilarious to you? We get it. Okay, that's it. What is your favorite episode? Count Spankulot. It's, it's when one of the one of the kids was also a vampire, and yeah. he was doing my Ben Diskin was was basically doing his impression of me, 
as Count Smegula, which was great. And he even said, Children's! So he pluralized, which I pluralized on purpose for no reason. But anyway, that's my answer. Did I answer your question, sir? Yeah, uh, thanks for Carlos. No, I, I, just one, one okay. question. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. No, you're great. Give, give it up for this young man. Still not as funny as Fairly Odd Parents. Anyway, who else is? Oh, my friend. Come on up here. Magnum PI has a question, everybody. All right, what's your question, Magnum PI? Okay, so what was it like, um, like, doing lines for Fairly Odd Parents slash for you, like, writing for it? Because I feel like some of these lines were kind of improvised, like, do you think I'm sexy? Internet, and how is this Ghostbusters 2? Like that? Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Right, just like Nickelodeon. Thank you, buddy. Have a seat, pal. Nick. Yeah. Nick, the private eye from Hawaii. Okay. Um, thank you. That's well. I guess it was a writing question. Uh, we we would write scripts very. Um, uh, we'd be very strict on the script. But the only rule we had was stick to the script only unless you can make it better. If you guys can make it better, go to town. And they would make it better all the time. They really would. Although the lines you mentioned were written beforehand, yes. We wrote those, yeah. They didn't make any of them. They were talented enough to make up those lines. No. But they were but these guys would always come in with they would always plus it. They would always make it better. And so we were very grateful. And we we called fairly odd parents a hole you would pour jokes into. Because every line had to be funny, every story had to be funny. We would work for six weeks on the script and they would come in and take it to level 15, just make it even better. So it was really, really awesome. And so, yeah, so a lot of those were improvised, but the ones you mentioned were not. Those were actually written, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, so, um, that's great. That's great. give it up for our friend Nick right yeah. here. Yeah. What else do we have? What was question? Our friend, oh. we're, we're, we can't do anything without the writers. It all starts on that script. It all starts on that page. We have to give it up to you guys all the time because without the storylines and the dialogue to begin with, we have nothing to do. We have nothing to bring to life, and we got nothing to add to. So it starts there, and that's that's where the magic really is. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, Darren, you come sit closer to me. Come sit okay, over right here, here, Darren. Right. No, no, come sit over here. All right, good. Uh, because I picked you, yes, my friend. Come on up here, hustle, hustle, here we go. I'm tied to the stage because we spent all the money on wireless mics, yes. <laughs> By the way, check out the shirt. Look at the Danny fan, I'm sure. I didn't think you because you're wearing my merch, but come on up, come here. All right, what's your name, my friend? Uh, it's Joseph. That's right, what's your question? Uh, it's actually for David. All right, David. Yeah, and it's kind of for you, too. I'll take it then, okay. <laughs> question for David. All right, if you guys were able to do a crossover with Danny Fan versus Cora, like if Danny were to go up against Cora, who would you who would you pick to win, and would you have been open to it? I'd, I'd, pick, I'd pick Danny Phantom all the way. I, I think I would pick Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I would, Danny Phantom I'd be like, oh, like I said, a little bit. Be open to do it? Oh, I'd be open to do it. It'd be fun to do a crossover with Cora if they ever if they Yeah, were, yeah. I, I, What I do you love, guys love think? Crossover? Crossover? That's the main question right there. Exactly. Okay, well, thank you, buddy. Thanks for the question, man. Thank you. All right, give it up for my friend, by the way. Give it up for him. Nice. What else? We yes. Come on up. You got another one over there. Oh. Yes, yes. I'm how did you how did you get in here? Woo! How did you get in here? You know, I'm violating a restraining order being here, but what is your policy about hiring Canadians as supervillains? <laughs> you know, you look a lot like my old friend Eric Bowser. Eric Bowser, you look like Eric Bowser. The voice The voice of Foop on the Fairly Odd Parents. What's one of your what's one of your favorite lines of Foop? Death, painful, fiery death! <laughs> I'm like, was this after The Sopranos, this TV show? The, 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 the amount of jokes that you guys were able to cram into each and every one of those episodes was incredible. Getting to meet this incredible cast. I remember the first day walking into the Nickelodeon uh, animation studio recording facility, and everyone was in one room, and then you had Tara Strong in the Hannibal Lecter isolation booth. And I was like, why? And it's because her vocal cords were just that powerful. I don't even think the microphones were on when they Normal humans on. can't be around. Yeah, normal humans can't. But I knew that you were going to be here. I just oh. wanted to say hi. Well, do you love Eric Bowes, everybody? I love Eric Bowes. See, I wanted him to be the only panelist, but we couldn't get it. I had to put you guys up here. And he's gone already. And he's already gone. <laughs> So, hey, um, should we do a core crossover? Danny yes, Fan? Yes. Would you guys want to see that? That could be kind of cool. Maybe I'll do a drawing on TikTok and we'll start there. We'll start that one. All right, one second. Yes, sir. Come on up. We'll grab you next, okay? Come in next. Come on up here, sir. 
By the way, another epic shirt. I love this shirt. Turn it around. Look at this shirt right there. Yes. All right, Frank, what's your name? Hi, my name's Nicholas. And uh, yeah. What's your question? My question is, what is your favorite Tough Puffy episode? Because I'm a huge fan of Tough Puffy. All right, give it up. Go sit back down. Thank you very much. Right. My favorite one. Well, you know, Darren was on Tough Puppy. He played the voice of the chief. You got that right. <laughs> there was a flea that was this big. One of my favorite Tough Puppy episodes, I love any episode with the chameleon. You were the chameleon, right? Oh, yes. I remember it well. You remember, don't you, Butch? <laughs> we were there in the room and everyone was laughing. It was such a good time. <laughs> Why can't I have good times anymore? Butch, please hire me. What, what was his favorite? He had, the, the chameleon had a candy store with chocolate. What was it called? It was the Karma, Karma, Karma Chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Darren Norris, everybody. It's so funny. Woo. But I like, but tough puppy was one of my favorite projects to work on. We had such a great time on that show, the yeah. voice cast. And the voice cast, again, the writing, the voice cast brought it to life. I mean, it was yeah. just so great. So great. Uh, well, yeah, sure, like, come on up here, here we go. Dun, da, da. Everyone needs a theme song. Dun, da, 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 da. Yes, what is your name? My name's Natalie, and um, can you guys please sing the Fairly Odd Parents theme song? Oh. Well, 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 thank you, Natalie. Give it up for Natalie right there. <laughs> Man. What if we just did I this? I think David Kaufman is just going to take this by himself. Yeah, yeah, go David Kaufman. <laughs> well, why don't we just do a couple of words? What is it? it goes obtuse. Robert Good. Ah, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for knowing it. Vodka. What? Vodka. I would scare it. Vodka. 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 All right, let's just say, one could say, uh, just odd parents, fairly odd parents. Well, what do you Eclipse your lid. Ready? You, one, you know it. You know it, I know it. Ready? One, two, three. Teeny is an average kid, and no one understands. Mom and dad and Mickey always give him big commands. Do me a little bit in his room, look at him to me. I can't do this. I turned it too high. All right, give it up for the voice cast right there. Too high, you're dead. Oh, yeah, you, you just Carl Lewis dead. Yeah. Hey, can we, can we make some money on that recording? Can we just can we market that? That'd be great. Let's market that. Let's market that recording. We like market, who wouldn't love, Who wouldn't want to buy that? Who wouldn't listen to that over and over <laughs> and over? <laughs> and we're going, yes, come here, come on up here. Here we go. Another theme song. Dun, 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 yes, what is your what's your question? Um, I've been getting back into Bunsen's Beast lately, one of my... That's my fourth Nickelodeon show. Thank yeah. you for knowing that it exists. One of my favorite underrated Nicktoons. Thank you again. You stay right up here next to me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> stay, get, her, get her anything she wants to eat or drink. Come here. No, go, yeah, keep going. And I was wondering, like, like, what was the experience like on that? Like... Like doing the show and the character. Guys, I've got 40 questions over here by myself. I'll be yeah. back in a second. Go ahead, take it. And there are big, broad questions, too. Take all the time you need. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Give it up for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Now, I'm just going to say it real quick, and I think you guys jump into when you create a show, what's your favorite part of doing a, an animated show? Obviously, the voices. Do you like the writing, too? Do you ever written anything before? Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you like written scripts before? Have oh I no I have not no. written do I have you, not I have such respect for writers. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah you like I mean I I've had moments where I think like I'm going to write a script and I sit in there for five minutes and go I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> don't return to the desk. As most writers do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do that really well. I'll try to get into the process a little bit because real briefly the process with Bunsen was just as much fun as doing uh, all these other shows we've been talking about. We had a great voice cast, great writers, and some shows last a long time. Some don't for various reasons. Sometimes the network is all excited and they're into it. Yep. Sometimes they're just not. Sometimes it's like, thanks very much. <laughs> and you're like, well, but I was going to go to college and pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it just depends. That's why I always tell people, have another idea. I always have another idea in the works. It always helps. It always helps. Yeah, do you have a question here in the front? Oh. Come on up. Theme song. Dum, 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 I will dum, say I, I, I'm a good rewriter because I think I do remember a couple times going, Butch, this line here, I don't know. I feel like maybe what if he said this and Dave and Butch would be like, just say the line. <laughs> <laughs> just say it as it's written. I think it was just say the line Kaufman. Just say the line Kaufman. Say the line Kaufman. And I was in the Hannibal Lecter booth. Uh, yeah, so. you, were, you were in the Hannibal Lecter booth. Now, what is your question? Um, I'm used to that, but uh, my question is, 
Who's the best character? Wow. Wanda! Guys, I'll be here for the Danny! <laughs> Girlfriend! There's your answer. Give it up for the show, baby. Who's the best character? Wow. I think it comes down to like who the audience likes. You guys, um, you know, you guys have to pick your favorite character. Some of the funniest ones I like are, the ones, are the ones they write for. Catman was funny. Crocker was always great. Timmy's dad, Cosmo, yeah. you know, great. Danny Oh, Fanny. her gender neutral uh, character that she did. Wasn't it a general? No, Gray did that character. It was a. No, didn't you? Yeah. Your dad by this weird kind of. Yeah, it was something like. She talked like this. Something like. <laughs> It was something like gender neutral. We're talking like this. Yeah. yeah something yes. like that. Anyway. My favorite. We have more questions. Yes, we've got another question. Yes, Gary. Oh, come up here, young fella. Hey, come here. I got it. Hey, Gary. Wait a minute. It's Fairly Odd Parents Animation Director Gary Conrad. Gary Conrad. Wait a minute. That question is easy to answer. The best character in the series was Dr. Rip Studwell. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Voiced by. Butch Hartman. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you. And it looks like Butch, Butch Hartman, too. It looks like, yeah, exactly. I had nothing to do with that. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Gary Conrad right there. Uh, by the way, nice shirt. It's really old. Get a new shirt, but that's like, oh, I'm cleaning our pool at 3.30. Yes, you are. You're late, too. Go clean. Yeah, go clean the pool, Gary. Thank you. But yes, young lady with the glasses right here. Here we go. Who's having fun, voice actors? Woo! <laughs> right, come on, Gary. Yes, what's your question? Um, this is for David. What's your favorite Danny Phantom episode that you worked it on? Favorite, like favorite episode? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, David, favorite episode? That's, I feel like that's a tough one too. It's hard to pick like just one, but um, I think some of my favorite ones tended to be like um, My Brother's Keeper. And You're gonna applaud like, every time he mentions a show. Because um, was a, it was a very special episode for him and his sister. Because ja yeah, Jazz found out he's Danny. Finn. Yeah, yeah, and it was a very, it was very touching. It was touching. Yeah. And that was one of the really cool things I liked about Danny Phantom was it had all the action stuff. It had the like the the the, the, the fighting. Carlos and... wasn't in it. There <laughs> <laughs> <Aaron> wasn't. <laughs> no. Some of the best aspects were you guys weren't in it. But like the epi but there were episodes that had very touching familial moments, so it it, it, it had a lot of dimension to it. It so. is hard to pick. I don't, it's hard for me to pick my favorite too. It, I think we like the Ultimate Enemy. Do you ever see the Ultimate Enemy? The hour Ultimate Enemy with, was, with was Dark. Yeah, that was a good yeah, one. yeah. That was a really good. One. good yeah. But I, I liked. I don't. I, I, there were so many. You know. Yeah, I, I thought I was the the fright before Christmas was. The, the rhyming a lot of fun, the, the rhyming, the yeah. Dr. Seuss kind of rhyming. Could you recite that whole episode for us right now, Derek? Oh my gosh, I can't. Yeah, I can't do that. It was good, there was a lot of rhyming. Exactly. All right, who else has a question back there? I saw your hand go up in the camo. Uh, is that camo? No, the green, yeah, the green, sorry. No, sorry, this young lady. Come on, theme song, here we go. Da -da 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 yes, what is your question? It's for you. For me? Yes. Okay. Um, I want to know how to pitch a successful show, such as Danny Phantom or Big Hot Parents. Guys, I'll be here for another hour and a half. I'll be, I'll be right, I'll be over here. You take your Just time. Just entertain yeah. yourselves. Okay, thank you. Give it up for my friend right here. Give it up. Give it up. I will answer this very, very briefly. Um, number one is have an idea. Who's got an idea out there? Have an idea, and then the next thing is don't be afraid to share your idea. A lot of us get afraid to share it. Oh, they don't like it. Well, if they don't like it, You'll never know if you're gonna get it solo because you're afraid to show it. You gotta get rid of the fear, number one. And number two, look for that opportunity. There's always gonna be an opportunity, a window that'll open up right in front of you, and if you're not ready to walk through it, you might miss an opportunity. So make sure you have that idea ready when the opportunity comes. But it's a matter of persistence, too. Don't just come up with an idea and try once and give up, because then you'll never sell anything. But you've gotta really, and then once you sell it, like when you auditioned for Danny Phantom, you auditioned in December of one year and got cast the next year because we were in there pushing and hustling and changing and making notes and trying to get the thing sold. So you've really got to be willing to, to work with the politics of the studio. So don't get your nose out of shape. Hey, my show's about a dog. Can it be a cat? Yes, it can. You know, things like that. It depends on what you want to stick to, but you really, when you're first trying, really, um, really be ready to take a lot of notes and a lot of uh, thoughts from other people. Yes, yes, come on up. You've got a small one. Please have the baby ask a question. Yes, please. <laughs> please, baby, ask a question. Butch, say hello to your daughter. What? I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm just finding this out. I didn't even know. Butch, you are the father. <laughs> <laughs> what do you 
what is your name? Kaisley. Nice to meet you. What's going on? What, what, what question? <laughs> so as experienced parents of Poof, um, what is your best questionable but best parenting advice? As fairly odd parents raising a fairy child, that sounded like Christopher Walken. Yeah. Raising, a fairy, raising a fairy child. All right. Uh, okay. Well, how would Cosmo? Hey, would Cosmo um, ever get mad at Poof and yell at him? On purpose? No. Yeah. <laughs> how about you, Wanda? Would you, would you, would you like, not the greatest. Not the greatest person. I think. Would, you ever, would you ever discipline a Poof? Neither is Dad. So. Wanda would never discipline anybody. That's right. No, I don't think she would. There's, I guess there's your answer. They're very, they're, they, 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 they are fairly odd parents. Yes. You can discipline me, Walter. <laughs> but Wanda, I can be nice very people. odd. If I were raising a poof, keep them away from crazy school teachers. <laughs> one of my, oh, one of my favorite episodes on Fairly Odd Parents was when poof, when poof is found by Crocker, and Crocker adopts him as his son. You're my favorite new child. So and then, and then, you're, then you're, gonna, you're gonna teach him how to play football, but you look at the football going, I don't know what this oblong shaped ball is, but I've seen other fathers throw it at their kids. <laughs> Come on, son, let's go play oblong ball. It's very funny. All right, who's got a question? Way in the back, yes. Come on up here, quick, 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 yes, here we go. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Running fast, running fast. The fastest ever. Here we go, what is your question, young lady? Um, tell me the, tell me the origin story of how Cosmo met Philip the Nickel. Oh. All right, thank you. Have a seat. I'll be here for another two hours, guys. No, you know what that was about? That came about because of Darren's genius as Cosmo. Once we found out that, that Cosmo could say anything that'd be funny, we're like, what would excite Cosmo? And he's like, I found something stupid. And we just said nickel. And then I remember we, we had a dinner that night or something. We wrote the line in the afternoon. And we had some kind of a dinner we were doing. We're like, Darren, can you say I found a nickel? All of us were saying it. You kept saying it all night. We're like, that's a great line. So that just came out of a, the fact that Darren's a funny guy. Because Cosmo could say anything funny. Can you say it for us now, Darren? There's this Darren Norris reciting, I, I, I found a, a nickel. Get a, give me a lead in. Um... I forget what the first line is. What's the line? What's the first line that comes before it? I want to give you a lead in. Uh, it doesn't matter. What is, why are you so happy? Why are you so happy, Cosmo? I found a nickel! There we go. <laughs> Wait, we need more applause than that. We need way more applause than that. But the payoff is the best. Well, I have good news and bad news. What's the good, what's the what's good news? I have good news and bad news. What's the good news? I made my nickel fill it. <laughs> what's the bad news? It's funny, we're trying to, people always come up and they say, what's your favorite line? And we've written so many of them. And it was 23 years ago we started. And you, it's funny, you work on these episodes for months and months, then you work on them, you watch them over and over, then you get them done and they go out. And you don't really watch them anymore. You don't like watch them for years, and you're like, people go, what the episode? And they'll say, you're like, no, I don't. I'm so sorry. I wish I did. I wish I could recite the whole thing for you. Uh, who else has a question? Yes. Look at this. Come here. We have Wanda and Cosmo here. Oh, yeah. okay. Look, we have Wanda's here. And little Con can I pet Cosmo? Hi, Cosmo. Look, is anyone getting a film of this or video? Of it? Look at his little outfit. Mom, why'd you dress me up like this? Okay. Does Cosmo have a question? Oh, look at his face. What's the question, Wanda? Um, my question is, what's your guys' favorite villain arcs on all those shows with Danny Phantom, Fairly Odd Parents? Like, who was your favorite villains that your characters went against? Thank you very much, sweetheart. Okay, I'll start with David. Give it up for this young lady. David, give me a favorite oh. Danny Phantom villain. That's a good question, because there was a lot of good villains on the show. You guys like any Phantom villains out there? We like any Phantom villains? Yeah. Oh. I That's mean, awesome. uh, wow. I mean, sometime today, David, pick the, a villain. Uh, David, pick a villain, David. I, I, I thought the, 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 the funniest villain was, was Rob Paulson as the box ghost, the box ghost because it was just <laughs> how I would just laugh. And I, and that I can, will do. <laughs> be, beware, I will get you. <laughs> That came out of a thing. We're writing a script, and like Danny, we ended up Danny encountering some useless ghost to get to the main story. Yeah. Danny encounters this weird ghost, and then Rob came in and just killed him. Beware, the or I will, they will, I will destroy you with boxes from Elliot Kravitz of Arlington Heights, Illinois. <laughs> it was great. Um, I thought that John Cryer was. X 
excellent as uh, Freak Show. Freak Show. Freak Show. I thought he was great. Um, and 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 one of my favorite uh, villains to work with was uh, was Undergrowth because I walked in uh, one afternoon. I'm like, oh, there to do another episode of Danny Phantom. I walk in and there's. Luke Skywalker sitting in the lobby. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, and oh, we're not, I like not, how we started off with, well, I'm just going to go to another Danny Phantom episode. I'm glad you were excited. I know, about it's so, seriously. Like, it was so cool because, like, you, you're just going to work and they're not ready for us. So, I'm just sitting there and Mark Hamill and I just sit and start, talking. you know, yeah, <laughs> for a half hour. It was really, really fun. So, there are different reasons for different favorites. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Now, anybody else have a question? Yes, sir. Come on up here, my friend. No, right, right here, right there. Yep. Drew, come on up, Drew. <laughs> bum 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 bum. So everyone say Drew, 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 Drew. Drew, Drew, Drew. The past tense of draw. Okay. Yes, sir. What is your question? So why did the Crimson Chin get more episodes, more representation, more love than Crash Nebula? Oh. Good question. Oh, right here. Why did Crimson Chin get more episodes than Crash Nebula? Because Jay Leno did the voice. That's why. Uh, that's, that's exactly good, why. That's a good answer. Yeah. No, really, we just, uh, I just love the Crimson Chin. He was the first one we came up with. Um, and then uh, we actually, it was funny, that episode actually aired after the Crash Nebula one. But Crash Nebula we did kind of as a lark. He was just supposed to be there, but not really be a main character in anything. But we did a we did a pilot for Crash Nebula too that never got picked up as a series, but we did a pilot for that. But we loved the Crimson Chin because he was just so over the top. And then Jay was so gracious to do the voice. He'd come in like, hey, uh, we're doing the voice now. Uh, I mean, like, uh, hey, come on. We were like, okay, Jay, the first day we're like, Jay Leno's coming. It's gonna be great. We we'll call his agent. What is he like? He likes pizza. Okay, we had like ten pizzas there. He's gonna be here for five hours. It's gonna be great. We'll ask him all these questions. And he comes in. All right, how's it going? Where are these lines? He comes in. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, okay, we go. Okay, you guys ready? We're ready. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm the draw of justice. Thanks, everybody. And, he, and, he <laughs> and he's out God. in five minutes. And we had ten pizzas to eat. It was so funny. But yeah, no, Jay, Jay was great. But that is. The simple answer, yes. Who else has a question? Way in the back over there. Like we'll get to this guy right here. Yes, come on. Yes, what is your question? This is all about. Okay, this is a question for David. Danny has a lot of powers. What would be one you want and don't want and why? Ooh, good question. Thank you very much. A power I would want. You know, I think actually having the responsibility to save the world on a daily basis, I don't think I would want that I thought you did that anyway. I thought David Kaufman, voice actor, did that every day. That's what I thought. That would be, that, that would be a lot of weight to carry on your shoulders. So the, the power to, you know, to have to save the world, um, I yeah. don't think I would want that one. Yep, saving the world. That's a big one. Uh, Carlos has tried many times to say that. Tried many times. I say Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> Why Bakersfield? Why that city? It was just hot and bothersome. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Let me there's, start there's with the lowest place of the totem pole. There's a, there's a great episode we did once where uh, I think Crocker comes over for dinner with Timmy's parents. And we cut away, and we cut back to Crocker at the table, and, you, and your first line is, and that's why I can never go back to Cincinnati. <laughs> You way in the back there, the man with the beard. Yes. Theme song. Bum 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 bum. Here we go. I think a more deadly theme song for him. Bum, bum. This is his entrance music. Jackie. <laughs> what's your name, sir? Mitchell. All right. What's your question? Uh, I just want to know. Did you have any other uh, self-insert characters like Studwell? Good question, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Give a round of applause for the show, man. And myself, and like when I like me, Butch Hartman as a character, there was only I only inserted myself one time in Danny Phantoms. Uh, one of our writers, Steve Marmel, and I were uh, uh, new uh, commentators at a sports game. Oh yeah, yeah one yeah. time. That's the only time I did yeah. that. Yeah, I'm I'm not an egomaniac like these people. <laughs> I don't need to be in every episode. <laughs> I don't know. I could do that exactly. No, but uh, you know what? I, I wanted to do some voices on Fairly Odd Parents. And then, like I said, I'm, I'm fairly decent, but when I met actual voice actors, I realized I couldn't hold a candle to them. So I realized it's better for me to be outside the booth. That way, we, the writers and I can hear the laughter and we can work on stuff more and then just help you guys, you know, plus the stuff in there. So I can't hold a candle to them at all. But that's why I didn't insert myself too much. Yes, super He's cool. He's no slouch. Don't let him play. Come up He's here, no super slouch. cool. Yeah, what's your name? Sebastian. We like these glasses? 
Yeah. Kevin, Kevin, shh, shh, do, do we, we never know who he really is. I mean, he could be anybody. There he is. What's, what's your question, bro? It's for Darren. Uh, he was able to do the live action and the animated. Darren's your best friend. He called you up. How are you, man? What's your name? Yeah. Hi, Rossiter. Oh, man. Nice. What's your name? Rossiter. 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 Wow. Yeah. What's, okay, what's your question? So this is kind of an individual question. So, which of the two shows that you both worked on was the easiest one to work for? Work to work on. Okay. Uh, well, I, well, first of all, Darren, you worked on Tough Puppy and Fairly Odd Parents. Which yes. one was easiest? Was there an easiest one? Uh, I, I don't know that I, I've ever thought about them that way. Uh, they were just they were very different shows playing very different characters. So I guess vocally, uh, Tough Puppy was easier, and I wasn't playing three of the major roles in the show. Yeah. What's nice about that? You guys can all answer. Thank you very much. Give it for Ross yeah. and around the way. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, what I, I think what I want to answer, but what I want to jump into another topic, though, is like, you got Tough Puppy because you were doing great on Fairly Odd Parents. I just said, Darren, you want to do this part. You know, so it, it pays to do great on one show, then the producer might hire you for another show. You know, because if you, because your job as an actor, I know you guys are talented, you do great voices, your job is to make our lives easier. If you guys can make our lives easier, you will, we will work with you all day long. Yeah. But if you come in as a prima donna and you're hard to work with, it's like we just don't have time. We say like we, we got to get in there, record you, and get out and make the show great. Exactly. Who wants yeah. to comment on that? Anybody want to comment on that? Like how how to how to behave as a voice actor or how to you guys are you get into the flow of it. You understand how Butch's mind works, how he directs. It's tough love. So when you're you, when you're getting direction, you take it with the greatest song. Go, oh, that's Butch. <laughs> hey, great job, Carlos. Next time, try acting. <laughs> okay, uh, but it's the vibe of the show. I had to keep up with Suzanne and Darren and and uh, Tara and Gray. I, I, you got to sink or swim, and so I got to keep up with these guys. I got to be get, bring that same energy in it. I missed that. I missed the the flow and the symphonic quality of just having everybody go at the same time. Butch at the helm as the conductor, and you just you have to merge into that traffic lane, or you or you're sunk. And it's the I'll go ahead, Suzanne. Sorry. Well, it's also the best job in the world, and if you are a cog in that wheel, it makes no sense whatsoever. You should be enjoying yourself every single second of every hour that you spend on it. And so there are rare, there are rare cases of people that are difficult to deal with. Hey, Suzanne, here's $20. Thank you. $20 right there. I'm kidding. I'm not giving you $20. I'm just joking. Uh, but, uh, no, but you're right. Well, you're right, though. It's like, um, you know, if, if you guys could come in and just really make it sing and make our lives better, we're like, oh, my gosh, we can write this joke for this character. Like when Jerry Trainer was in there for Tough yeah. Puppy. Yeah. He'll say this. Whatever he says, he'll just kill it. Like, you guys, Crocker will kill us. Darren will kill us. Suzanne will nail this. David will, will totally nail this. So it's like you really want actors to come in and make your lives easier. If it's not about you, it'll be great for everybody. Amen? You guys understand what I mean? Yeah. 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 Right. Couple more questions. Yes, right up here. Come on up. Dun 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 dun. Theme song. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Um, for voice actors, what is the strangest direction you've ever gotten in the booth? And then for you, what's the strangest note you've ever gotten from the network? <laughs> wow. Good question. All right. David, strangest note, real quick, if you can think of one. We'll go down the line, real quick. Okay, come back. Suzanne, strangest note. Have you been drinking? Yep. <laughs> we, we would ask that every single time, I think. Uh, that was... One, uh, uh, the voice is kind of uh, like she's a little drunk. So it's kind of hard sometimes to get the words out. <laughs> Darren, strangest note. If you can think of one. <laughs> uh, my, I don't know if this is the strangest note, but it was the funniest note, and it was about Carlos. <laughs> he, 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 there was some ancillary small character and they were trying to come up with a voice for it. And Carlos is doing his job. He's pitching out this voice and this voice and this voice and this voice, and Butch just goes, no, no, no. <laughs> and so that became the thing. Every time Carlos would make a mistake, all of us in the whole yeah. family of the show would just, he would say something and we'd all go, no, 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 give me the tiniest air. And it wasn't really a note or anything, but it, just, it was just so funny in the moment and the fact that it lived on as a running gag. So great. It was great. No, no. The, the weirdest advice I ever got was from Richard Simmons. When I was doing Rocco, I always had allergy problems. I was like, you know, what do you do, um, Richard, to keep, he'd like, keep it moist. <laughs> <laughs> I want a t-shirt that says, keep it moist. Keep it moist. Keep it moist. 
And Juan, and, keep it moving. David, any weird notes that you can think of? Uh, I know. I, I, my notes were always. Uh, yeah, well, I always said, David, you're fake. Yeah, I, I actually was perfect every, all, all the time. I understand that. Now, wait, well, the question for me was what weird <laughs> note did I ever get from the network? Um, it's not, there's nothing more heartbreaking when you, when you have an actor you think is, is great, and then the network says, we need you to change out the actors. And you're like, oh, it's a, it's a heartbreaking thing. Uh, it happens sometimes, it happens very rarely, but sometimes because of the studio and they have someone they have in mind, or you have, they, they just wanted things a different way, or you have an actor you're really pulling for in the auditions and they want another one, that's kind of hard sometimes, but yeah. And I'm gonna name all those actors right now. <laughs> no, no, anyway, uh, one last question. Yes, Red Hat came up first, here it is. Give it up for Red Hat, Red Hat. Ooh, Timmy, it's Red Hat. Hi. Yeah, how's it going, bro? What's your name? Oh, yeah, my name's Miguel. Okay, Miguel. Got a question, Miguel? Yeah, what was the inspiration behind uh, the, the entire Fairy Off Parent series? <laughs> I'll be over here for two hours, guys. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Thanks, well, give it up for Miguel, everybody. Real quick, uh, I, I will, this is the super condensed version. I was working on Johnny Bravo. Who's ever watched Johnny Bravo? Baby? Why did that get more applause than Fairly Odd Parents? I don't understand. But uh, I worked on Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo was ending. I didn't have a job. I just had a new baby. This is back in 1997. Right. I sat down at my desk and I went, I'm tired of working for other people. I'm going to come up with my own idea. I thought of Fairly Odd Parents in 15 minutes. I sat there. I drew Timmy Turner. I drew Wanda first. Then I drew this weird fairy, fairy godfather who I'd never seen a fairy godfather before. And I named him Cosmo because on Seinfeld they just revealed Kramer's name is Cosmo. That's why I named him Cosmo. And I thought it was really funny. And then I thought I, I, I drew an evil uh, villain for him, Vicky the Babysitter, and it took like 15 minutes. And I went and pitched I I was under contract. I had to pitch it to Cartoon Network at the time. And they said no. Thanks, but no thanks. And so I went to Nickelodeon, <laughs> and then they said yes to the pilot. So yeah, that is the super condensed version. There's a lot more to it, but that's kind of why. I really needed a job. That's where the idea came from. Yeah, I needed a job. One last question. Gary? Oh, OK, Gary's got a question. Oh. I'm curious about this. Um, you know, some cartoon series record their actors individually, but I think you guys always did it in a group. And as actors, do you prefer to do it individually or be in the room together? Good question, guys. Easy answer. Absolutely prefer to do it with everybody in yeah, the room. Hundred percent. Every 100%. time. Every time. Every time. Every time. And I agree because you get you really you, you follow everybody's vibe. You get you can time it better. I just think it's better that way myself. And we always had a great time, didn't we? Yeah. Did you guys have a great time today with this panel? Yeah. All right, let me go down the line real quick and just reintroduce him. Carlos Ellis Racky. Hi, everybody. Darren Norris, everybody. The fabulous and not drunk Suzanne Blakesley. David, I was always perfect Kaufman. Yes. And my I'm glad we are so grateful. Listen, guys, we could never do this without you guys being fans. We are so grateful to you. So, guys, give them a round of applause. Give our fans a round of applause. And we'll see you guys back inside, okay? Thanks so much. Woo! Love being here. And now I will do the exit music. Hey, you got